Hallelujah. You know, this world is so geared up to give man praise, right, on a regular basis. I don't know about you, but probably somebody got your attention this week, that person that cut you off. And when they cut you off, you most naturally said, praise the Lord, right? Or maybe it might be something else has happened in your life. And, and, and sports figures, all they do is they just, you know, I mean, really, to be honest with you, they need to stay out of politics. But anyway, besides that, um, they're worshipped. They're worshipped. And, and if somebody does something, you know, they, they, they just hit a home run or a touchdown, they go crazy. But today, we're going to do what we do that comes natural around here. We're going to give the Lord a standing ovation because he is the only one that's worthy today. So I want us to praise him. Come on, let's give him a clap offering today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your name. We honor you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. Father, we bless your name today. Father, I thank you, Lord. I pray for Tuana and her family. Lord, as her sister passed away this week. But God, we know that you give comfort, Lord. You give strength to the family, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, for those that are at home watching us, Lord, that would love to be here, but they're unable, for whatever reason, to be here today, that you would be with them. We pray for those that are watching online, live, and maybe later on through YouTube, Lord. We ask, God, that, that the words that will be spoken today, Lord, I'm asking that just like you anointed Jehaziel, Lord, Father, to speak over Israel on behalf of Jehoshaphat and the people. Lord, I'm asking that I would be uh, that person, that spoke person today, Lord, to declare your word and your promises, God. Father, I pray today that you would move through the preaching of your word. God, I ask for our children as they're being ministered to right now that you'll bless them. I pray for Paul and the youth tonight as they'll be meeting at 5 o'clock, God, that you outpour your Holy Spirit upon them, Lord. And so, God, we love you today. We're grateful. We're thankful. And we want to make sure that you receive the preeminence in the mighty, awesome name of Jesus. And everybody said... Amen. You may be seated. And then I'm going to have you stand in just a couple of seconds. But I'm going to let you relax just for like 60 seconds, all right? But uh, we're going to stand for the reading of the Word in, in just a couple of moments. But I am so grateful. This morning before I came to church, I, um, I, I, I felt compelled to, to listen to one of my favorite preachers. Uh, he actually took the place of David Wilkerson after David's uh, death or prior to his um, accident that he had, who really um, was instrumental and the founder of Teen Challenge. David Wilkerson it has an incredible church in uh, New York City. And now, um, actually, Carter Cullen is the pastor there, and he's one of my favorite speakers. C-A-R-T-E-R-C-O-L-O-N, if you ever want to listen to a man of God that has such a passion, such a passion. And he preached a message this morning on the will of God for the weak. Have you ever felt weak? And he made a statement that touched my heart, and I want to share it with you. I have got to stop making promises to God. And you've got to stop making promises to God that we don't keep. Now, I'm not even going to ask for a raise of hands, and I'm not raising my hand because you're all with me. I've made promises to God that I have not kept. So we need to turn over a new leaf. This resonated in my heart when he said this. Stop making promises to God and live on the promises that God has made to you. So stand as we read the Word of God. Stop making promises that we cannot keep to God and start living on the promises that He has made to us. And listen, there's not one promise that God has given to me that He has not kept. Amen. So we're reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're reading from verse 1. And it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Amorites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria. And they are in Hazaron, Tamar, which is Endegai, and Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. 
so that Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Verse 6. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God, verse 7, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your father forever? And they dwelt in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, famine, we will stand before the temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and we will cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. Verse 10 of Second Chronicles chapter 20. And now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not uh, destroy them. Verse 11, here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possessions, which you have given for our inheritance. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude. Have you ever felt that way? Be honest, people. Have you ever felt powerless? Even though we have the powerful one living in us, and the power against the great multitude that is coming against us. And, uh, and do you not know, or we do not know what to do, but here it is, our eyes are on you. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattatiah, a Levite, the sons of Asaph, in the middle of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of the great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. I want you to say that with me. For the battle is not yours but but God's. Here's the suddenly. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up against the ascent of Ziz, and you will, you will, uh, my eyes aren't focusing properly here. You will not find them, at, you'll find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerhel, and you will not need to fight in this battle. Here it is. But position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to stand still. You know what the second hardest thing is to do? Shut up. <laughs> Who is with you, O Judah of Jerusalem? Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and he pulled his hair out by the roots. No, the Bible says that he worshiped the Lord. He bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. That's what we did today. There's a liberation when that happens. Then the Levites and the children of the Kohites and the children of the Kohites stood up and praised the Lord and Israel, and their, their voice was loud and high. For they rose early in the morning, and they went out to that local golf course, Tekoa, and they, they went out, Jehoshaphat, and stood and said, Hear me, O Israel, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise in the beauty of holiness. Exactly what we just did. Hallelujah. And they went out before the army, and they were saying, and I want you to say this with me, praise the Lord for, for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. This is what happens. See, so at least one person got liberated this morning through praise and worship. So I hope you all got liberated. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushes 
against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who came against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. What happened? Because of praise and because of worship, even in the middle of a battle, the enemy confounded the, these, these nations and they turned on one another and killed one another. That's what praise and worship will do. It will liberate you. Matter of fact, when it liberates you, you don't much care what anybody else thinks. You're just going to walk in that liberation. Amen. You may be seated. And the rest is just uh, something that just tells us of, of great victory. Once again, I want to share what, what God really uh, touched me this morning when, when uh, Carter Cohen preached on the will of God for the weak. Because some of you are coming today and we're proclaiming boldness and we're proclaiming strength, but in and of ourselves. We feel weak. We feel a little anemic. We, we feel a little overtaken by, by everything that's transpired in our life this week. And maybe you've had a week that all of it's been is just wonderful and grand and glorious. And, and I just want to touch you because you're divine. Help me. I need your counseling after the service. Right by the exit sign, that door right there, it's my door. I need, I need you to have you lay hands on me. Because, because I don't always operate that way. You say, well, you, you feel that way. You look that way when you're preaching. Listen. It's during the week when no one else is listening. It's at night when you can't get any sleep. It, when you're worrying because there's more month than there is money or, or the situation seems to be overcoming you. I want to say it to you one more time. We've got to stop making promises to God and we've got to live on the promises in the Word of God that He's already given to us. Because would you admit it? Don't say it out loud. We've all made promises to someone. You have had promises made to you that were never kept. But I can guarantee you today that whatever promise God makes with you, he will keep it. So we've been talking about in Romans chapter 9, verse 28, about a season of suddenlies, about how God is going to cut the time shorter and by his grace and mercy and righteousness make a way where there is no way. I still believe that we serve a God of miracles. I still believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That the greatest miracle that I could ever receive is forgiveness of sins. And to know that I stand behind this pulpit, uh, not perfect by any means, by any stretch of the imagination, both before accepting Christ and even after accepting Christ. But it's not, it's not a merit of whether I deserve it or not. In an instant, in a moment, in a second, he took my sins and he buried them in the sea of God's forgiveness. Never to hold them against me again. So we need to be loose today for, the, for the, uh, expecting the unexpected. We must expect the unexpected. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Can I get a witness? And amen. And we need to believe God. Expect God for the unexpected. And we see in verse 16 and 17 that it says about this time tomorrow, this time tomorrow. You know, God has control of our todays and he has control of our tomorrows. He knows everything about us. There's some people that have the audacity to say, well, I'd just like to know what tomorrow holds. Not me. Not me. I'm going to be getting on a plane in a few days and flying away. And I just want to make sure that that person gets a lot of rest and knows what they're doing. If not, I must be ready to preach when that thing goes down to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to accept the Lord. Because you say, well, I'm healthy, I'm whole, I'm well. We don't know how much time we have left. The day that we have and the breath that we breathe today can be taken away from us in a moment. And we will spend eternity either serving God or away from him forever. So that's the word he used. He, he says, Jehoshaphat, he lifts up his voice. And, and the prophet, we talked about it last week, Jehaziel was very credited. He was, he was from a long lineage of prophets that, that when he was speaking, and I pray that would be me today, I pray somehow, God, that I would be your or oracle. I would be like Jehaziel, Lord, a prophet of God, that, that I would stand today and I would preach what your word says. And he says, I want you to listen to it. Have we always heard everything that somebody says? 
My, my wife, every once in a while, God bless her beautiful soul. I think every once in a while, just a once in a while, she'll ask me, did you, did you hear me? And my response is, hear what? <laughs> you and I can be in a conversation with someone, heavily in the conversation. There can be multiple people talking to us, and we really not hear what's being said. And, and, and husbands, don't elbow your wife and vice versa or, or whatever. Every one of us have come to that point where, where, where we haven't hearkened or we haven't heard what the Lord has to say. And I believe the Lord is speaking to us like he did in the, in the book of Revelation. And it's really the same context. It's, just, it's the same word. In Revelation 2.11 it says, He that has, a, uh, has an ear, let him hear. Same word that Jehaziel is saying to, to those that are candidates for a miracle that actually, that actually came, that a whole nation was set free because, because they trusted God. Today we need to hear the word of the Lord. Today, we want to hear our favorite preacher. We want to hear our favorite singing group. And that's good in and of itself. But beloved, we, then we don't want to spend any time in the Word of God. Some people say, well, Pastor Wayne, God's not speaking to me. Well, my next question is, have you been reading the book? Because this is how God speaks. I have never had a, 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 a voice, the voice of God, the literal voice of God speak to me. Some people have. Some people have told me that, and I knew they had too much pizza the night before, too much pasta, and they were just dreaming. But I've never heard the actual voice of God. But the voice of God was heard through this prophet Jehaziel, and the Word of God speaks to us. If, 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 if we say God is not speaking to us, then we're not reading His Word, and we're not listening to His Word, and we're not adhering His Word, and I'm included in all that. You can know that. You can know that. You can know that you're talking to somebody and, and it appears like, but they're really not listening. And we need to listen today to see the formula of victory. We can have these people listen and they're hearing, but, 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 but sometimes even today in our stubbornness, and I know there's nobody here that way, but in, in, our, in, our, in our fear or, or in our weariness, or, or you're sitting here today and you are totally preoccupied. You haven't heard one word I said from the introduction because you are totally preoccupied by your problem. Totally preoccupied by your situation. Come on, that happens to me and I know I'm not the only one. I can read the Word of God and pre be preoccupied and not understand what I read. But you know what? I'm going to keep reading it, and I'm going to ask God to keep my mind stayed upon Him. Because in the time that we need it, you might not think it's deposited, but in the time that you and I need it, that Word will come out. So we need to hear what the, what the Lord is saying to us today. He's saying, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. I'm about to do something in your life that is so unbelievable. That it's going to be hard for you even to receive it, but I'm going to do it in such a way that I'm going to receive the preeminence and no one else is going to get the glory, and I'm going to cut it shorter than what you ever thought possible. And, you know, is your mind on Christ today? Is my mind on Christ today in the situation that we find ourselves in? That's a good question. Or are we preoccupied with the cares of the world. That's easy to happen, isn't it, church? I'm not the only one. I'm not some lonely Joe up here preaching. I, 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 it happens. Sometimes it can get overwhelming, especially in the craziness that we're living in today. But he says in verse 15, Hear, O Israel, listen. When the prophet cried out, the mood of the people was the Moabites are coming. How can I listen? It's like, it's like a semi-truck is about six inches away from you and somebody wants to get your attention. No way, baby. I'm getting out of line. I'm getting away from them. I'm getting away from that freight train. And this is the situation. He says, listen, the mood of the people, I mean, they, they needed to hear, but listen, the Moabites are coming. The Amorites are coming. The Edomites and all the otherites that are about ready to eat us up. They're coming. Let's get the kids. Let's get mama. Let's get out of this place. Hasta la vista, baby. Get your fastest sneakers on and boogie out of that place. Let's build a big garrison. Let's get in the, let's get in the walls of the city and let's, let's hunker down just like COVID. Let's hunker down. Make sure you got your masks. Make sure you got every, all your provisions. 
Make sure you got enough supplies to live for at least a year or longer. He don't love himself. I'm not being critical of that. But I mean, here they are. And he's saying, listen to me. We need to listen to me. The enemy is about ready to annihilate us. Hey, as long as I've got feet and as long as I've got legs, baby, I'm going to beat that pavement as quick or beat the sand with the sandals as quick as I can to get out of here. And that's so overwhelming that the situation that you find yourself in, that you find yourself preoccupied. Preoccupied by the dilemma that we find ourselves in because we're human. We're human. And they were preparing for the worst. And why is it sometimes that you and I prepare for the worst? I'm not here to beat you up. I do that myself. I, you know, if, if we're not in a tizzy, we can work ourselves up into a tizzy. We don't need anybody else's help. Amen. If you don't know what a tizzy is, I mean, you just get in a mood. You get, in, you know, I mean, you just get in, you know, you just get in a situation, a circumstance that seems to flood the very breath out of you. So they're preparing for the worst. They were, pre they were preparing for the long haul. For the long haul. So the prophet lifts up his voice and he says, there's going to be a battle, all right. And, and, and you're not going to stay here in the confines. I want, you, I want to give you some marching orders. You're not going to stay here where it's safe. And that's what we want. We want to stay where it's safe. But you're not going to stay where it's safe. You're going to march out of this place. You're going to go to a place where, where I'm going to prepare for you a mountainous experience where you're going to look down over the valley and you're going to see these nations that have turned on you. You are going to see that they are going to be annihilated and you're not even going to have to lift a finger. I am going to take care of the enemy. I am going to obliviate them. I'm going to annihilate them. And you're not even have, going to have a hand in it. You know, sometimes it's hard to hold our peace and let the Lord fight our battle because we just want to fight. You ever met people like that? They'd rather, my father was like that. He'd rather fight than switch. Yeah, didn't have any teeth, hardly any teeth. He, he was in northern Maine, and they used, to, they used to work on a potato farm because there is no such thing as Ohio, uh, Idaho spuds. It's only Maine spuds. That's the only thing they have, Maine. I went out to eat with somebody yesterday, and I pointed out to him, Look on, look on those. That says Idaho. Those aren't real potatoes. They need to come from Maine. <laughs> so my dad would, he would take his teeth and he would lift up a 50, 50 pound barrel, not too intelligent, with his teeth just to show off how strong he was. Yeah, that would be my response too. And, and you know, I mean, he was known to get in a fight on a regular basis. If somebody, but then finally, this cantankerous guy that we prayed for, my mom got saved first, and I got saved. We prayed for dad for almost 20 years. Finally, he got saved, and he wanted to get baptized, and you know the story. We had a big lake in Maine, and I, along with his pastor, baptized him, and I was going to forget the formula when he was under the water, in the name of, and leave him under there, because we had to pray for him so long. <laughs> but God got a hold of him. And if God got a hold of dad, he can get a hold of any one of us. Because of such were some of us. And he said, listen, verse 23, the fact that three armies that, 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 that allied themselves against Israel would actually turn on themselves and kill themselves. What happened, pastor? They sent Judah first. You know what Judah is? Judah is praise. It's liberating. Do you know what we do in our dainty little services? We do the Melly Manelli and we lip sync. M what is it? Yeah, I was close. Ball ballpark figure anyway. Those people that, you know, got caught lip syncing when they were supposed to be singing the song. And has that ever happened to you? You've been in a service and, and, and you're just thinking about, gee, if this pastor could get finished with this, then I could get this done this afternoon. I got that project that I need to do. And, and my wife's been at me. I mean, my wife's been encouraging me to, to do this project for a little while, and I've been unable to do it, and, and we're so preoccupied. But when we come into his presence, beloved, there is a powerful weapon that God has given us. It's praise and worship. 
It matters not who's playing. It matters not the orchestra or the band, whether, whether they come from the south, the north, or the east, and the west. The thing that matters is that you and I are, are tuned into heaven and, and, and we're somehow tuning out that problem that, that is so gigantic in our life and we're taking those moments to praise and worship the Lord. The Bible says prior to that that, that, that Jehoshaphat fell on his face before the Lord and he worshipped. It was the last time we fell on our face before God and worshipped. So what's the difference between praise and worship? Praise is sending Junifers that confounds the enemy. I believe the praise of God was so strong that the enemy was hearing it, that it was confusing them to them, and they turned on one another. That's what praise will do. Praise will run through the interference of hell, and it will take all the courts of hell, and it will cause them to turn on one another and be defeated. And the difference between praise and worship is praise will, will ambush the enemy and worship brings us into the most holy place where it's just the Lord and myself with communion in an atmosphere that only God can do his awesome work. Do you remember that? Do you remember Isaiah 28, his awesome work? Can you remember his unusual work that he wants to do in our life? Or are we seeing the mountains so great that we've lost sight of the victory? And we, we, we think of Mount Perizim. Remember Mount Perizim? Perizim is bring, it's a breakout. It's a breakthrough. Is there anybody in the house of the Lord today that needs a breakthrough? You just need, you need to break out. You know, just like it's beautiful to, 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 to see that, that, that egg hatched. And, 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 and what comes out of it isn't always beautiful. Because it's got all kinds of slimy stuff on it. But, 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 but you know, it's like a caterpillar. It does, that's not very beautiful, but boy, when it comes forth as a butterfly. And you might say, well, there's nothing beautiful in me. There is something that praise is going to unearth in you. It's something that worship is going to unearth in you that you might not think is beauty, and God is going to beautify it through praise and worship. And even if your situation doesn't change, you and I are going to change. Because the victory, the battle is His. So I'm not trying to earn this. Listen. Make no mistake about it. I cannot earn anything. Well, I want to earn God's approval. I, I, I want to earn God's love. I want to earn this. You can, I want to earn grace. How can you earn grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is free for the asking. Hallelujah. We, we don't merit it. I mean, God has never blessed anybody that earned it. Come on, church. I can't earn it. You, you see me here, but you don't live with me during the week. And I don't think God would say there's too much of a change, at least not on most days. But God, but God. Listen, we've got to stop trying to earn it. I want to learn how to receive it. And, and they received a miracle, and they didn't even do anything. They didn't even lift their finger. See, I'm going to use something that's not grammatically correct. The hurry you go, the behind you get. Well, I'm going to earn merits of righteousness. I'm going to earn this. I'm going to earn that. Beloved, it's God's grace. So the prophet Jehaziel lifts up his voice and he says, it's going to be faster than you ever thought. And, and it's going to be in such a way that you never, ever thought possible. I predict, I preach, I believe God this week is going to do something in your life and my life that we never thought possible. That it could only be God. It could only be God. You're going to stand back and say, whoa! There's a, there's a name I like. I'm going to preach about it one of these days. Lodabar. It was a place. Lodabar. Well, I'll tell you one. Sometimes I feel Lodabar. I feel lower than the bar. And I don't measure up but it's not merited by our goodness. It's not merited by Wayne Hart's gross eloquence or, or, or years of experience or lack of experience. It's his grace. It's his grace. It's his mercy. God is saying, God is saying, listen, I'm going to do a suddenly. I'm going to do a suddenly in this place that every seat in this house is going to be filled three times. 
that you're going to have to expand your territory. You're, you're going to have to believe that what I spoke to you last year during a time of fasting and prayer, there's going to be great increase beyond measure. And it's not going to be by man's ingenuity. And it's not going to be because of your eloquence. And it's not going to be because of our goodness. God's going to break forth in it. And there's going to be some hungry people, 40,000 plus in this area, the surrounding area, 300,000 people. They're out there. They are miserable. And they're looking for someone that could give them hope. We went out to eat with another couple Friday night, and it wasn't hard. I just, I just, I just, I, I knew her name because I saw her little tag, and I said, is there any way that we can pray for you? She did a rhetorical pause, and by all means, she said, if you would pray for my family. They're out there. People, they're hungry. They're needy. They're, they're needing a touch from, from you and I of, of God's awesomeness. Hallelujah. And, 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 and verses 21 and 22, it talks about that. 18 talks about he bowed before the Lord. We cannot, we cannot earn this. And I believe God's going to do it suddenly in your life, in my life. I've, I've claimed it. I believed God for it. I fasted. I prayed. But I can't earn righteousness that way. I've got to come to myself. I've got to humble. I've got to believe God. I've got to say, God, why not now? I don't believe in the last days when revival is poured out upon America and upon this nation and many other nations. It's not going to be some fancy pants evangelist that everybody else knows in the world. It's going to be normal people like you and I that God's going to put his hand on and he's going to put a believing spirit in us. And it's not because we deserve one bit of it. If we got one bit of discernment of what we deserve, we would be in hell. We would be eternally separated from God. But God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary for your sin and my sin. I love it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal everlasting life. And in one split second, God took Wayne Hartsgrove's sin and placed it in the sea of God's forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. And when the enemy tries to dig it up, he says, no fishing, baby. Get out of this lake. It's not for you. I've forgiven him and set him free. Is there anybody that's glad that your sins are forgiven today? How did he do it? He did it in a millisecond. As soon as you said, Lord, I'm sorry. Come into my life. Right then, he forgave you. That quick. And that's what he's preparing to do. We've got to expect the unexpected. The suddenlies. He's going to cut it short. And it's going to happen quickly. And guess what? He's the only one that's going to get the glory. I believe that. I, you know, when I preached last week on that Argentina city, I believe that for this city. I'm not talking just about the garden part because, you know, we, we, we have crazy seasons here, right? But I, but I believe that spiritually, God is going to, he's going to, he's going to do something so miraculous in this community, in this surrounding area. I mean, why not here? Why not now? Why not us? We just got to believe God. We got to expect God for the unexpected. Whatever we're facing, more and more I'm anticipating and believing for a season of suddenlies. I got a text last night from my oldest son. I don't know if he's going to view this or not, but I yelled upstairs. Gail's, Gail was upstairs. And he said to me, Dad, I can't wait in a few days to spend some quality time together with you. Here's a son that God healed our relationship. Is there anybody here that believes that God is a healer of relationships? Yeah. Listen, you can have your million dollars and you can spend it. And you can, you can stay awake, you know, you know, just, just getting all kinds of wrinkles, wondering who's going to rob you of it. <laughs> to me, that was worth more than a million dollars. God did it suddenly in that situation, and he turned it around. Do you think it's because I was God's best dad? No. But as a parent, I'll tell you what, we've always told our kids this, that we have never, ever tried to hurt you intentionally. That if indirectly, any way we've ever hurt you, like I've had to do as a pastor, if, I, if I've ever hurt anyone, it was never directly to do that. Because God is a God that wants to do the miraculous in your life 
and in my life. I believe that. I don't know why we can't catch the idea that God could do something in our life and in our situation. You know why I think why we don't? Because we're hard on ourselves. We just, we, just, we just lay on to the cliche, well, this is just the way it is. I'm just preparing for the long haul. haul. You know, it's never going to change. It's never gonna, I'm never going to break out of this anger. I'm, I'm never going to break out of this fear. I'm, I'm never going to break out of these things that seem to bind me and confine me and, and refine me. Well, refine me, that's what they'll do if we allow them. The Bible says one day in a suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye. Listen, so, so quickly, in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, for the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the clouds of glory, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What is that? That's the ne next great cataclysmic event that God's going to have on his prophetic calendar. It's called the rapture of the church. The dead in Christ going to rise first. Now, I'm about ready to fly on an airplane. Do you know that some airplane manufacturers and, 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 and um, actually people that own these airplanes, and, and, and they, they will actually, they believe so much in the rapture that, that they won't have just uh, two Christian pilots. That because, because when the rapture, can you imagine? You're on, a, you're on a plane and you're not saved and the rapture takes place. What are you going to do? Go grab a hold of that thing and try to land it? Hey, is this going to freak you out, man? When you're driving down the highway and you see somebody right next door to you, you take one look, look over, and they're gone. In a twinkling of an eye, in a millisecond. God's going to turn it all around. And listen, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to be able to call grandma. You're not going to be able to call grandpa. You're not going to be able to get a hold of your brother or your sister because every born-again Bible-believing Christian is going to be taken from this earth. And then what's going to happen? There's going to be seven years of Holocaust. Right now, this world is ready for the Antichrist. Just like that. Already it's into one world economic system. And I, in the natural, am, am frightened by this administration. But in the supernatural, I say nothing takes God by surprise. Your voice and my voice will be heard. And they will not, they will be, they will be, they will not relinquish the call of closing churches and, and closing the mouth of, of, of Christians. But come what come may, I'm not looking, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. I know that, that in a twinkling of an eye that Jesus is going to come back and this world is, they're going to run out of excuses that the aliens have come to snatch millions away. That's only going to last for a portion of time. And I don't know about you, but I want to be in that number. How's it going to happen? Suddenly. It could happen right now. Could you imagine that? The clothes I got laying on the floor? Because I'm, 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 I'm trading them in for a, for a heavenly garment. Amen. No more sickness, no more pain, no more soul. How's it going to happen suddenly? If God can conclude the history of the ages of this earth in a suddenly, in a twinkling of an eye, don't you think God can take care of us? I said, don't you think God can take care of us? Nothing takes him by surprise. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I want you to think about it as I'm closing. I want you to think about this. In one second, God forgave all your past and my past. I wouldn't, you hear me say this several times. We got three screens. You would have to be weird to want your past to be on those screens for everybody to see. No, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not trying to, you know, attack you or anything. But I'm so glad I'm so glad that just like that, my past has been erased. Is there anybody else this morning that's glad that your sins are forgiven? That your sins are forgiven? And if the Lord could do that in, in, in a millisecond, then don't you believe we can expect God for the unexpected? Don't you believe that we can believe God? Verse 23 says, And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, it looked like the enemy was going to win. And you know what it looks like in America? It looks like the enemy's going to win. You know what it looks like in this world? It looks like the enemy's going to win. But I want to tell you what. Listen, all the things that people are cooking up, you know what the Bible says? They have their reward. And it's not going to be good unless they repent.
Oh, well, they're going to get by with it. You don't get by with anything. Come on. And I don't know about you, but in the natural, the things that are transpiring could get us discouraged. Come on, let's get us to the point where, man, God, I just don't know. But beloved, we've got to expect God for the unexpected. That God is going to do some things that we never, ever thought possible. I love Jesus today. I might not be perfect, but I'm so grateful that he's forgiven my sins. I'm so grateful that he's, he's blotted out my iniquity. And I'm so glad as far as the east is from the west, he has removed those sins from me. Never to hold them against me again. And sometimes within us, we develop a mindset. Sometimes we get stubborn. Come on, church, loosen up. If your belt's too tight, loosen it up. Sometimes we get stubborn. You know what our theme song is? I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. And we develop a mindset. And we get in this mindset that he's done it for others, but he can't do it for me. And this is the way it's always going to be. Now listen, we need to, we need to know some things that, that are very, very important for us. We need to balance this message. You know why? Because there are some charismatic flakes. There are some Christian flakes. There are some people, oh, don't look. Maybe you've never met them, but I have. They're flaky. Some people are, who say they love Jesus are flaky. I know you think I'm crazy, but, but, but maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe one of them is your relative. I don't know. So we've got to balance this. Listen to me. We must have the posture of faith and endurance and patience. That's, that's Scripture. That means it, it isn't solved in a moment and, and I have the faith and I have the resolve and I have the steadfast that I'm going to stick it out no matter what. If it doesn't happen suddenly, I'm still going to trust Him because there's got to be a balance. I'm very afraid when the, when the pendulum swings in some church all the way over here and all over there, there's got to be a balance. And this is the balance. Okay? But then, then you've got to trust God for that. You've got to believe that part. But you know what I'm fearful about too? Tragically, we go beyond the patience and the endurance, and I, wa I want to deposit this in your spirit and in my spirit this morning. Sometimes we have the mindset that it's going to be this way no matter what. This is, it, was, it was Aunt Tilly went through this. Uncle Sam went through this. Uncle Joe went through this. This is the history of my family. We have this problem. We have that problem. And we have every other problem. And I, if you give me a couple more seconds, I'll think of more problems. And we get a mindset that that can't happen to us. This is just the way it is. We've got to prepare for the long haul. If not, God, I'm still going to trust you. We've got to trust God even in the if nots. But let's not let the pendulum swing so far to the right that we do not believe that God could come in and intercept fear in one second and give us peace. Stand to your feet this morning, would you please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm in, I'm in line for suddenly, Lord. I'm prepared for the long haul. Oh, God, I don't know when it's going to happen. I, I've been praying forever. But I'm still believing. I'm still believing. Lord, I'm going to trust you if not. If it doesn't happen to me the way I think it's going to happen to me, I'm still going to trust you. But, Lord, would you annihilate that mindset that thinks, well, this is the way it's always going to be, and there can be no change in my situation because when that happens we will not expect God for the unexpected anybody here ever been surprised by what God has done for you okay I'm gonna close with this here's my ending surprise 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 because God is about ready to pers to surprise us. Every head bowed, please. Father God, I thank you this morning for your word. I'm prepared if it doesn't. But I'm living in praise and worship and I'm going to bow before you and worship flat on my face and I am believing you for the miraculous. I am believing you for the incredible. I am believing you for, for the unexpected, oh God. 
And I'm not going to listen to what my family says and what everybody else says. Well, you just came from this long lineage of losers. No, no, no. To those who know Christ, there are no losers. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I pray that you will cut it short and your righteousness will run interference and praise and worship will run in interference before us. And we will, we will be engaged in a season of suddenlies that, that is nothing short of miraculous, of miraculous, Lord. And God, I pray that you will help me. I'm, I'm going to be selfish, Lord. Would you help me even in the tough times to give you the praise that you deserve and the worship that you deserve? Lord, whether I do it on my own, which is most of the week, God, I choose to do that. I choose to pick up your word. I choose to praise and worship you. But God, when I come with my brothers and sisters, Lord, help us to lay aside our pride. Help us to lay aside our dignity and seek your deity, deity Lord, and worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, I pray today that you will help us to expect the unexpected. I wonder if there's anybody here this morning and you've not accepted Jesus as your Savior and you really aren't prepared for eternity. But this morning, somehow, some way, something has been said that's, that's just touched your heart. Maybe you heard pastor say, well, listen, you know, just in an instant, in a second, all my past and my sins have been forgiven and I've been given a brand new start in Jesus. I want that for my life. Is there anybody here that just slip your hand up and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I need that. I need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm ready to meet Jesus. Is, I, I pray everybody's uh, you know, saved here this morning, but is there anybody that's not? You want to you wanna make sure that you're ready. I want you to look up at me just for a couple seconds in closing. You don't have to have a preacher there. You don't have to have the rabbi there. You don't have to have the pope there. You don't have to have a priest there. Wherever you are, is, is, is a place where we can ask God to come into our life and forgive us. And then I want to ask you this question. Are you anticipating? Are you expecting the unexpected? Because when you and I come to that point, God is going to move in. Well, I, I haven't seen it to come to full fruition yet, but I'm, I, I just know when it happens... He's going to get all the glory and all the honor. And in the meantime, you know what he's doing? He's shaking everything that's shakable. Scott, would you come back up? I'm going to have you play something, and we're going to praise and worship the Lord. Then you can be dismissed, and you can go. And uh, that wasn't too, too hard of a dose of medicine, was it? It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Well, I'm going to live like this. Well, Make sure you prepare yourself to, 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 to endure that thing, but also believe God beyond that. Don't go to the other end and say, well, you know, it just can't happen for me. I'm, I'm too this, I'm too that, I don't have enough, I don't have this, I don't have that. Every one of us are a candidate for a miracle. And there's no greater miracle than a soul coming to know Jesus. Amen? So would you just at least sing a, one of these courses with us? And then if you feel dismissed, would you go? And make sure you pick up the same kids that you dropped off. Amen? And, uh, but listen, I just want to encourage you today. And then we're going to start breaking down Second Chronicles. A uh, week after next, we're going to start breaking it down in some words that are very important. That if we, if we pass over those words, we can miss them. And they have great meaning. Great meaning. So if, you're, if you want to study, study Second Chronicles and, and chapter 20. And keep studying that because we're going to be on that for a few weeks. Go ahead, Scott. We're just going to praise and worship the Lord. And after that, you're going to be dismissed. Hey, listen, I just want to say something to you. Listen, listen, listen. I love you. All who are I appreciate you. I do. I really do. I love and appreciate you. And I'm so grateful for you. And we're in this together. Amen. We're in this together, church. And we are not. Listen. The Holy Spirit wants to break off with you and me. The victim mentality. Well, I'm always the victim. Get rid of that victim mentality. You're not a victim. You're a victor. Maybe you've had been victimized by certain people and circumstances, but you're no longer that. You're an overcomer, right? I am that. I'm not, I'm not going to preach sermon too. Go ahead. Let's, let's praise and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All who 